<laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> is this it? Okay. Do I need an exercise? <laughs> yeah, I think I do. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Sure. How sure are you? Hey, sure. I just go. Sure. I smeared a dead insect into my eye socket. It's beautiful. Yes, great. On that note, mm -hmm. yes. Bonsoir here in Chicago, bon, it's a night in France, and I'm Patrick. And I'm Stuart. And we would like to tell you a little bit about our last trip to France, looking at Chateau. So two weeks ago, Stuart posted our first uh, video about where we are coming from, what we've done together, and I can honestly say I was I'm so surprised and humbled by all the amazing comments we've got and the support we have received from the Chateau community. Thank you so much. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for your, your comments. And please keep them coming because there's never been enough good input. One thing that we wanted to share with you is specifically what it is that we're looking for, for a ch in a chateau in France. So I thought we'd share with you some specifics of what it is we're looking for for the area where li we want to uh, live and the size of the land and different things about it. Yes, yeah, so we, in general, we have decided that there are multiple areas that we really enjoy. So we, we love the Loire Valley, uh, Lower Normandy, um, Centre, um, these are all regions we, we enjoy and the, the climate is, um, especially in the, in the Loire Valley and in the Centre region, a bit more temperate, um, considering that we are sitting here in the middle of about, about an hour and a half outside of Chicago mm. and in the winter we go down about 35 degrees below freezing Celsius. Um, and in the summer, we can go up to over 40 degrees in heat. So it's it's such an extreme uh, weather region that we look really at weather, pat weather patterns, excuse me. And so the, the, it, it is a very huge area that is um, where we're looking. So it, it's pretty much, uh, you know, uh, central, northern area of France. Uh, and we're specifically looking for uh, a pretty big lot of land. Uh, we want to make sure that it has at least uh, how many hectares? About four hectares is, is kind of the minimum we're looking for. And but four, the four hectares uh, would be in acres would be about ten acres. Yeah, something about ten acres of land. Uh, and that's fifty thousand square meters. Um, just uh, it's also sustainability. Um, growing, which we do here already, growing some of our own vegetables, um, herbs. Um, we were thinking about maybe getting some sheep, some rescue sheep, it's always fun. Uh, maybe a donkey. Uh, that's my kind of, I, I, I love donkeys. Anyway, so. Um, so as far as, far as the, the type of chateau that we're looking for, mm. uh, we specifically, we're not looking for anything that's medieval. Uh, we're looking for something that is, uh, basically we're looking for 18th century. 17th, 18th century. Right. Um, they are, they're very pretty, pretty chateau in, uh, from the 19th century, the Belle Epoque, where industrialists and very uh, rich uh, bourgeois families built their, their summer homes. Uh, the difference to, to 17th, 18th, even, you know, and prior centuries is those homes were not self-sustained. So most of those chateaux that we look at have in the past been um, have a, a house to live in and a, a farm to support it with right. all the buildings. Now, right. one of the problems we've run into over and over is that the, the, 
those estates have been sold off in piecemeal. Mm -hmm. So there is, the farm has been sold off, the, um, the barnyard has been sold off separately. So you have uh, a chateau, which is lovely, but no buildings that go with it that are right next to it and don't belong to it. So that's not what we're looking for. Right. Um, and but, specifically, we're, the reason why we're wanting to get some uh, outbuildings to go with it is because we specifically are wanting to have some that we can convert into jeets or something that, and in case uh, yes. for people in the United States who don't know what a jeet is, it's basically uh, a self-sustaining separate rental unit, uh, sort of like, you know, here we have uh, an in-law an in suite, yes. you know, which, which is basically considered, in, in France would be considered like a jeet. Right. Or a lake house, right. you know, it's, it, we have a lot of right. lake houses here in, in Wisconsin around us or uh, in northern Michigan and Indiana, people have their little lake houses and they're completely self-sustained. Right. So that's, yes, that's, that's Jeet. So our last trip, uh, it, it was an adventure, like always when we travel, or when most people travel, I suppose. So got to the airport and we were booked on United Airlines. And now business class would have cost $8,000 per person. And we were not quite willing to spend that. So uh, business, no, uh, uh, economy plus, economy plus was about $400 more, more leg room. And Stuart and I are tall. Stuart is six foot and six four. So a little more leg room goes a long way. Right. So we arrive at the airport and we get a notification after we just went through security, everything was fine, um, that uh, our plane has changed. Um, we did not get priority security uh, and the lounge access that we had paid for, because uh, a friend dropped us off, off at the airport with plenty of time to, to spare, uh, that was all that none of this was there. So it was really frustrating. Yeah. So we go to customer service and so There is this lovely lady sitting there and I'm really irritated um, The good thing is that her husband is German and so she completely knew how to handle me which was great. So um Everything was kind of settled and it wasn't. So we were just in the middle of the plane. Um, and I realized it, it is what it is. Let's just um, enjoy the flight. Went to the gate and sometimes uh, the universe works in mysterious ways. So anyway, so we go to the gate. I hand her the, uh, my, the, our boarding passes. I said, is there a, a chance that we can sit together because we were separated? And she said, uh, the lady at, at the gates was a uh, customer service representative from uh, United, looked at us and said, well, I can do much better than that. You've been upgraded to business class. Mm -hmm. I, so I was glad that I did not lose my temper. Everything worked out and we had a really enjoyable flight. Now I would like to give a shout out to the United cabin crew on the flight from Paris, uh, from Chicago to Paris. That crew was so amazing. They were funny. They were, um, they, they were on top of things. They were upbeat. And with COVID, everyone on the plane, of course, has to wear a mask. None of that is particularly enjoyable, but it is for all of our safety. Right. So it was just really nice. And so thank you to the United customer service people in Chicago or here, or at Chicago or here. And thank you to that flight crew, Priceless. Thank you. Thank you. The first night we spent in Blois, which was absolutely wonderful. We walked along the Loire, we had a beautiful sunset, uh, had a great dinner, and food is amazing. And uh, spent a wonderful evening, slept well. Next morning, um, we drove down to the region of Lyon, which is the central region of France. Um, from there, we went to Chateauroux, 
After that, we went all the way up northwest to Samur. Uh, from Samur, we went to Rouen. After Rouen, we went to Honfleur, Versailles. And in the morning of that day where we went to Versailles, we stopped in jouy en jazas where the Toile de Jouy was, was made. So before we left for France, uh, we had to set up our appointments to see all the chateaus that we wanted to see. And so Patrick contacted all the different realtors that we had in order to make sure that we had specific times that we were gonna go on the different days that we were there. So we were on a very tight schedule of different places that we needed to be at different times. We had long drives that we had to, to do, so we, we figured we would do things like uh, stop and see if any towns had brocants or antique stores in order to stop and kill time. And, and uh, for people who don't know, a brocant is sort of equivalent to uh, a sort of a thrift store slash uh, antique store, right? Yes. You can find yes. anything there at a brocant. I mean, anything from uh, appliances to 300-year-old armoires. Uh, anything is possible uh, and sometimes you walk in and you look around and think that just is basically uh, garbage and sometimes you walk into a brocante and uh, you, you see a 300 400 year old piece uh, that's a beautiful antique so it's it, you just it's one of those things where you go in with an open mind right and thank goodness there is Google Maps because uh, I, plot, you know, I just put, plotted the route uh, in the evening and then I put nearby and put in Brocante or antique stores and it showed us all this, the, the antique stores that right. were there. So when we're in the Brocantes, one of the problems that, of course, we're, on, we're basically traveling and we can't really buy anything large while we're at a brocante, right? So one of the problems that I have that when we're going there is that we we actually did see in several places, we saw some things that we would have bought, right? Yes. It was like, uh, it was kind of frustrating at the same day. It was great to know that those things are out there, but it was also very frustrating to know that we had to leave it behind because there's no way we could buy it because we had no place to put it. Well, you can't put a settee, <laughs> two armchairs and two side chairs in the overhead compartment, yeah. just not working. Uh, or uh, a massive um, iron gate that yeah. was from the 18th yeah. century, which was lovely and just laying there in the grass. Yeah. Uh, that's not happening. So one of the stops we had booked was the Chateau de Beaulieu in Samur. Uh, Dr. McGuire and his wife Mary own the chateau. They bought it 18 years ago. Uh, it is stunning. It is right uh, on the Loire. So there's only the road and the, the embankment separating the chateau from the Loire. Mm -hmm. It is gorgeous, 18th century. And the Maguires are the most gracious Yeah, hosts. they were just charming people. Uh, yeah. Just wonderful. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Maguire speaks four languages fluently. Um, I'm a little jealous, I mean, maybe a lot jealous, but uh, Mary Maguire is a lady um, just fantastic. And we asked them why, how they got there and they stayed there overnight on a trip. Uh, the owners wanted to sell. And they said, and why not? <laughs> so they just bought it. Mm -hmm. And I find that so ins inspirational because sometimes we just have to catch the moment and do what's right there and then. And it was just very much supportive of what we are trying to do right, right. now. Exactly. If you ever get a chance to visit the Chateau de Beaulieu in Samur, it's right on the east and outside of, of somewhere, it's about, a, I don't know, four, four minute drive from the center on the, the, the road that, that goes along the, the Loire. Mm -hmm. Just do it, it is wonderful. 
So after dinner, spending time at the Chateau de Beaulieu, uh, we had already had our bottle of champagne and a bottle of wine, and we were kind of getting ready to turn in for the night. Yeah, and we were just we were just like on our you know phones and tablets, getting caught up on all of our email and social media and stuff. Right? True. Yeah. And then I opened my laptop, and I got an email that. Leslie Hinman in Chicago had an auction, um, European Furniture and Art. Mm -hmm. And so I logged on and sure enough, there were a couple of things that weren't lovely. And one should never bid while one is slightly tipsy. Oh. However, no. so we, we uh, put in very low bids just for fun. Uh, so when the, the, the next day, when everything was set and done, it was a two-day auction, and there were a couple of items, I, I just put them in a minimum bid, that an 18th century mahogany top table from England, lovely piece. Uh, and I thought, oh, what the heck, I put in $100. And um, we got it for $100. So, uh, two days ago, I had to go to Chicago, and pick up everything we had bought. And I have a large car. Uh, there was there was no room to spare. No. So now we are sitting here in a house that has way too much furniture in it. And it was a lot of fun. And uh, at the uh, auction house, they had only three of the pieces there. Uh, it's a Venetian mirror uh, from the 1880s, a, uh, a pair of candelabras, mm. no, no, sorry, sconces, pair of sconces, gilded bronze, and a, a clock uh, from, of the, from the time of Napoleon I. So those things were there, and then I had to go to their outside location to pick up the rest, where I meet Angel. Angel is a remarkable man who has like us, done crazy things uh, throughout his life, and he has rehabbed houses in even in the Caribbean, which um, never done that, so it's really remarkable. And he helped me load the car. It was just uh, really everyone at Hinman Auction was was great. So thank you to Hinman Auction and uh, all the help that they've given us. Yes, and we're doing a separate video on. Uh <laughs> on the arrival of the, those pieces here at our house. And uh, so you'll be able to see all the things that we bought at that auction. It's not pretty. I mean, they're, 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 the they pieces are, are pretty, it's but a lot. It's, when I it's came here, it was, it, it's like the Nutcase Express. <laughs> Anyways. So while we were driving through the French countryside, one of the things that we noticed every once in a while when we drove by was uh, these places where there were these beautiful uh, limestone fireplaces and mantles that were just kind of randomly just set up in a little grouping. And I always wondered what those were. Uh, we saw those first in 2019 when we were there. And so this time when we were there, we decided to stop and actually check them out a bit more. And so what we learned was is that these are basically like the demo pieces for stonemasons. And in uh, France, they're called Talio de Pierre. Yes. So in Europe, the tradition is uh, apprenticeship, journeymanship, and then becoming a master. And so the Talio de Pierre uh, have their, sometimes these ginormous fireplaces that are from reproductions from the 13th century all the way to the early 19th century. They can do things in marble, limestone, but what they usually display next to the road are limestone place, uh, fireplaces. Mm -hmm. So really fascinating, um, just gorgeous. And it's something that you don't see uh, in the United States. We don't see, I, I have never seen anything like this in Germany. Uh, and the first time I think I went to France was uh, about 40 years ago, when my parents first um, drove with me through France all the way to Spain uh, for a summer holiday. Um, so that is, it, it's really fascinating, it's really beautiful.
like to talk about uh, one of the big highlights of our trip that was Enfleur, which is a beautiful harbor town. Yeah. Uh, it has a, a, an amazing tidal harbor uh, and just remarkable uh, seafood restaurants, or in general, wonderful restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we were so fortunate to spend two nights with Philip Banana at the Chateau Le Fleur. I would like to say one thing, it's, uh, uh, there's this old saying, be, be uh, afraid to meet your heroes. Right. Now, I wouldn't call them heroes, but they were just such wonderful, uh, it's, it's, I kind of misappropriate the quote here, that's what I'm gonna say. But it was, it was so nice. They were just the most remarkable hosts. And for me being German, being able to to have these wonderful conversations with with Philip's mom it was just oh that just made my day. While we were at Le Fleur, uh, there were a couple of evenings when we were very fortunate that Anna and Philip spent some time talking to us, considering that they had just had the storm come through and they had lost a lot of trees on their property. So we knew that they were very busy, but we were very fortunate that they were able to spend some time with us and talk to us about, you know, YouTube and social media. We, we can't thank them enough. They are just such wonderful hosts. And if you ever get a chance to go to Le Fleur, please do so. It's, you will not regret it. On our last day, we traveled to visit the Toile de Jouy Museum in jouy en -Jazas. This is the town where the Jouy factory was located that produced beautiful printed fabrics that are still being used today. So for our upcoming videos, we should have something that, uh, a video that is specifically about the auction items mm -hmm. that we accidentally or purposely bought. <laughs> and uh, we will have another video that is about, uh, specifically about the Toile de Jouy uh, Museum and about uh, some designs that I'm doing that are based on Toile de Jouy designs. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we're gonna have the videos that are about the different chateaus that we looked at. Mm. Oh, and we're also going to have uh, videos that are about uh, restoration projects that we've done in the past. Thank you for watching. Thank you for finding our little adventure, um, hopefully as ex exciting as we find it, or partially exciting. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.